How you going, people? Uh, this is an officer involved shooting. I decided to, uh, Mesa just puts out this DR, whatever, maybe that's the case number. I, I'm not sure what that is. Um, looks like East Broadway, OSI is officer involved shooting. And this is what they put out. So, I don't know what's going to happen. And I figured I'd just do the video, kind of like if I'm watching it, what I'm thinking and what's going on. And you can understand what's going through my mind while I'm doing it. Plus, it's shorter than me watching the whole thing than going back and trying to redo it because it's not like I take notes. I just kind of like want to know what's going on and then maybe I'll catch more. But screw it. Here we go. In 2019 on East Broadway in Mesa. A neighbor called 911 to report a possible domestic violence situation. I've got it turned up for this part. I'll slow it down when it comes to the other, but we're at one and a half speed right now. At 2254 East Broadway. You can hear the disturbance in the background as he's on the phone with operators. This is Mesa Police. How can I help you? Oh, uh, I would like to report a case of possible domestic abuse. Okay, what's the address is coming from? Uh, 2254. That's the apartment on uh, East Broadway Road. A second and more frantic call came in from a young girl at that home, saying her brother was drunk, high on drugs, and threatening to kill them. 911 emergency. Hi, um, can I get a police to my house? My brother, he's drunk and... He's drunk and what's going on? He's high. I'm drunk and... Okay, is he being aggressive or what's going on? Yeah, yeah, he's trying to find my brother, my dad, and my dad, he can't stand. He's got outside me. Okay, what's going on? Um, 2254 East Broadway. It's the little house. It's in the area by the street. But can you go fast because I think he's fighting them right now. Okay, he has a gun. Okay, he has a gun. Is he threatening with a gun? Yeah, he's trying to say he's going to kill us. The first officers arrived on... Okay, so we have a domestic disturbance. And it's still a domestic. A lot of people think domestic means man and wife, but domestic is anyone in a home. So if the son is beating the parents, that's domestic because they're living in the same house. That can be fall under a lot of different state laws have different rules, but most state laws that falls under domestic violence or domestic type things. I know normally it's man and woman. Scene and met the young girl who said she ran out of the apartment, but her little brother and dad were still in there and being threatened by her older brother. More officers responded to the address and started to set up around the apartment. And set up around the apartment means they set up a perimeter. So they're not going in. Uh, remember now, this is government who told you to give up your guns so they'll keep you safe. And now when you call them, they surround your house while you're inside getting beat up because you have surgery. This is what government does. I mean, every time I see these and then I hear all these comments about, Rick, we need more training and we, if we had more cops and we should give more money because more money and more training will always make things better because then government will suddenly be good, great, and competent. Are you freaking kidding me? This guy is calling, he's had surgery, and he's getting beat up with his son and his son's got a gun. And the cops show up with multiple units with vests, body armor, training. They've all been getting paid to do this. And what do they do? They surround the house. They don't go in and help you. But Rick, well, I pay taxes and I was told that if I pay taxes, the police had to save me. Well, that's because you're an idiot. You believe what a government tells you. An officer was able to make contact with the younger brother on his cell phone and he was able to exit the apartment. The children told officers that their dad had difficulty walking and would not be able to get out of the apartment on his own. Officers observed the suspect later identified as Neil Chiago Jr., positioned at the front window of the apartment. Officers contacted him on his cell phone and began talking to him, trying to de-escalate the situation. Okay, I'm going to slow it down right here because the cop, if the guy's, the suspect's talking really fast. Hello, Neil? Hey, what's up? Neil, it's Mesa Police. You need to listen to me really carefully, all right? You need to come outside with your hands above your head and empty. Don't come out with any... Okay, so when I first heard this guy, I was like, man, this guy hasn't been through hostage negotiation training. <laughs> and uh, yes, I've been through hostage negotiation. I got a certificate in FBI, freaking whatever. Doesn't make me an expert, but I, it, it tells you how to talk to people when it's crisis. And when you call somebody who's being violent and aggressive and you come off like a street cop, like, hey, you need to listen to me carefully. You better put, you're not going to defuse the situation. You're not going to get cooperative. You're going to get the guy fighting with you. I mean, a better way to call this is to kneel. Hey, man, look, cops are out here. We don't know what's going on. We're trying to figure it out. Let, let's work through this. Let's calm down, take a breath. Uh, let's figure out what's going on. Will you talk to me? And then let the guy kind of see where he stands. This guy gets on. You need to listen to me very well. You better come out with your hands up. And then when the guy goes off and says, screw you, now the cop starts trying to be nice. Yo, man, we don't want it to go this way. Well, if you didn't want to go that way, you shouldn't have made your first contact, your initial contact, being a freaking jackboot cop. 
you're going to come out. You better listen careful. You better come out with your hands up. When I first heard that, I was like, shit, that's why I stopped it right here. Because I was like, dude, it was right here or right after this. I went, okay, let me just do the video on this. Weapons, listen to our com Neil, it's Mesa Police. You need to listen to me really carefully, all right? You need to come outside with your hands above your head and empty. Don't come out with any weapons. Listen to our commands, all right? So you call a guy and you, you don't listen to him. You just say, I'm the police and you got to listen to me and follow my commands. That's how you initiate an initial response with a highly volatile situation who's possibly as hostage and is armed. Uh, who thinks that's a good way? Raise your hand. Well, you're an idiot. What the fuck? Hey, dude, this is non-negotiable. Hop on out and come out with your hands above your head. Non-negotiable. That means the guy has nothing to lose. There's no point in him talking to you. If you said it's non-negotiable, screw it. I. Why do I want to talk to you after that? I'm on with suspect right now, trying to get him to come out with his hands above his head and empty. Hey, man, I ain't doing that. Dude. If you motherfucker shoot me, I'm gonna shoot you back. Fuck ass motherfuckers. The guys who always talk shit like this normally never do it. So, my guess, I haven't watched this video, my guess is he's gonna come out and threaten with a gun and the cops are gonna open up and kill him. He's not gonna shoot at them first. Uh, and I, I'm one of my crazy cop stories I tell this dude, with, you know, he went up to a bunch of people and cut their faces. He crashed a party. And when they asked him to leave, he cut the pe people's faces. He was running around. He was a gangbanging thug. I chased him for I don't know how long. We finally caught him, and he had a loaded gun inside. He was like, I ain't going to jail. I'm coming out fighting, blah, blah, blah. And he came out with his hands up and laid down. I called him a pussy. And I go, dude. I, I really called him pussy after I went in and found a load. I go, dude, you had a loaded gun in there. Yeah, so what? I go, you fucking been talking shit about coming out shooting and you ain't going down. You're going to take a cop with you and you ain't going back. And I said, we're out here yelling at you and you don't come out shooting. You leave the gun inside, come out like a pussy with your hands up. <gasps> fuck you, gore, you nigga motherfucker. I was like, well, fuck you too, pussy, talking all that shit. But I digress. Anyway, if you want to hear a cop story, I think that's one of my crazy cop stories. Fuck you, dick sucking bitch-ass niggas, man. You suck my dick, bitch. I'm going to fucking go out shooting. Hey. He's threatening to come out shooting against us. So out of all that, the cop heard one thing that he thought it would pass on to the other officers. Why? Well, because that's an officer safety issue, and everybody I know, look, man, this guy's kind of threatening to come out. This is the mindset he's in. Be careful. Don't take any unnecessary risks. Don't think that he may not shoot. He's already said he's armed, and he's already said he's coming out shooting, and he's obviously under the influence, so be careful. Now, did he tell him that? Some cops is like, oh, cool, now I got, it. now I can just shoot him. He's already threatened me and he's armed. As soon as I see him, I'll just shoot him. Is that what the cop meant? I don't think that's what he meant. But do I think there's cops out there that could have taken it that way? Hell yeah. You better shoot me, man. Hold up. Fuck you, bitch. Fuck you, bitch. Fuck you, bitch. Fuck you, bitch. Hey, Neil, dude, we don't need to do it this way, okay? Come out with your hands above your head. Neil, we don't need things to go this way. Okay, when we're dealing with drunks and they're talking like this, we used to, cops used to call this liquid courage. You drank a little liquid courage and now you're just talking smack and we know you're full of shit and we know we can take you. We're not going to kill you or shoot you. We're going to just snack your ass and throw you on the ground, handcuff you, and, and show you that you're not as bad because there's no point in killing you because you're drunk and on the influence and you don't know what you're doing. Nowadays... Oh, shit, man. Cops are like trigger-happy, crazy maniacs shooting, looking for a chance to shoot. They wake up in the morning polishing their bullets going, Woo-hoo! Man, I can't wait to do a mag dump on somebody today. Come out with your hands above your head and empty. Shoot me, nigga. I want to die. Hey, boss, you copying this? I'm shoot. He said he grabbed the shotgun. He's ready to die. Hey, fuck you, bitch. You're going to suck my dick, bitch. Hey, Neil, we don't want things to go down this way. Dude, we you don't. Now, a lot of this smack talk is probably because there's people still in the house. If this guy was alone, he wouldn't be talking smack so much. And that's why sometimes you don't want to have dialogue with people like this if they're just going to threaten and do all that because you give them a way to vent. And, and sometimes they will talk themselves into something and jack themselves up. So the cop is trying to calm down a little bit. He's keeping his voice. He's not reacting. Seems like he's doing an okay job other than his failure 
at the start. Neil, we don't want to shoot you, okay? We need you to come out with your hands above your head and empty. We want to help you. Okay. Neil, we don't want anyone to die, okay? This isn't a big deal. Neil, we don't even come fucking close to this fucking house right now. This is a situation, motherfucker. We know where Dad is right now. Dad's in the house. Hey. Dad's in the house, motherfucker. Yeah, he's down right. Dad's in the house. Um, who thinks this cop <laughs> is feeding the bad guy tactical information every time he upstate the sergeant while he's on the phone with the suspect? Who thinks that's a good idea? See, in hostage negotiation, the hostage negotiator, we always had a booth that was controlled, limited access, and people that came in couldn't talk, couldn't interfere. Sometimes we had an assistant uh, uh, negotiator that would write notes and pass them to us to kind of give us ideas on where we need to go in case we forgot something. And he would write down ideas and we would share things. But one guy would talk and I wouldn't be briefing Everyone else, hey man, this guy said he's going to kill everybody. Hey dude, we don't want anybody to die. Hey man, my dad's in here. Hey, he's got a hostage. Hey man, we don't want anybody to get hurt. You just don't negotiate that way. That's not a good way. Rick, you think you know everything and it's not fair. These cops try to do it. You just hate cops. Shut up, you freaking crybabies. He's claiming dad's in the house and he's saying it's a hostage. Yeah. He's not coming out. Yeah, motherfucker, I got a shotgun, 20 gauge. It's 20 gauge shotgun. I don't want 20 gauge? Dude, that's a pussy gun. You ain't got a 12 gauge? Hang on, I'll hold on. Go look and see if you got a 12 gauge. That's a much better gun. All right, Neil. Hey, man, we don't want, Neil. We don't want anyone to die, man. Just. I'll die. Neil, dude, we don't want that to happen, man. This isn't a big deal, okay? Hey, hey, don't come inside. Neil, we're, dude. I keep seeing these cops kind of walking around with this type of situation. They're in front of the house. They know the guy's got a gun, and nobody's, like, behind cover. Nobody has a long gun. I mean, maybe they're not as close as I think they are, but I thought they were parked right in front of the freaking house, and this is where this is taking place. And these guys are walking around with their hands in their pockets. Don't come inside. Neil. Come on out, man. We don't want to. We don't want to make any more food. Inside. It would be very easy to say, "Dude, nobody's coming inside." Okay, relax. Take it. Take a break. Nobody's coming inside. You got my word. I'm out here. I'm in charge. Even if the guy ain't in charge, I'm in charge right now. I'm telling you, no one's coming inside. So relax. You wanna. You wanna calm this dude down and take away what his fears are. And this guy's right now fear. And I don't even care if the SWAT team's ready to enter. I'm telling them no one's coming inside. I'm going to lie to you in order to get you to calm down or distract you so you're not ready. Let me call my girl before I go in. Hey, Neil, I'll tell you what. Neil, if you come out with your hands without a, with no weapon, I will let you call your girl. I promise you, man. I'm giving. That's a pretty good technique. I, I, I promise you he's trying. Now, you would... Look, this guy can't control whether this guy calls his girlfriend. He's kind of negotiating with something that's really not in his power. Guy's in a freaking house. Unless this house and the dad, nobody has a cell phone, and nobody has a phone in that house, this cop has no negotiating power to allow him to make a phone call. This guy's going to go like, fuck you, what? Motherfucker, I don't need you to make a phone call. I call myself. What the fuck are you trying to tell me you're going to let me make a phone call? You bump punk ass bitch nigga liar cop. I mean, that's that's a response the guy could have gave, but he's under the influence, so maybe he might not caught that. So the cop's trying. He's just not really thinking. Uh, last thing you want to do is let somebody who's agitated get on the phone with a girlfriend or wife because 99 times out of 100, that's probably why they're pissed off and in the situation they're in, and it does nothing but escalate. So I would never allow that, so to speak, and I would never bring, like they do on TV, the wife to the scene to hand him a bullhorn him and think that somehow the wife's going to be able to talk them down, or the mom's going to come and talk them down. That's just stupid. It doesn't work. I'm giving you my word. 
I'm calling my girl right now. You're going to call your girl? <laughs> See? <laughs> I didn't even know it was going to happen. I should you not. I have not watched this. The guy's like, I'm calling her now. So now the cop just lost credibility because he tried to bargain with something that he really doesn't even have the ability to withhold or give. You only bargain with things that you have the ability, like electricity, water, food, uh, you know, you never bargain with weapons or, or, or things like that, drugs, but because most people always want weapon and drugs. But as far as airplanes, helicopters, money, electricity turned on, not turned off, you know, things like that, you can bargain with because you have control over it. Can I do that? Hey, just, dude, just stay on the line with me, all right, man? Now, some people would say it's probably better to get off the phone. I don't. I would not terminate this phone call because the phone call is giving me intel. The phone call, I can hear what he's doing. I can hear what he's saying. I can hear if he's being aggressive. The guy's not being aggressive to dad or anybody else. So who's really in danger here? To me, the focus of this guy is the cops outside. So if he's not really a danger, is there a reason to go in there and force a confrontation? This is what... It used to be we would do a hostage negotiation for, you know, 12 hours, two days, three days. I mean, look how long they sat outside of Ruby Ridge and, and, and Waco. I mean, Waco, shit, I think it was over a month they sat outside and negotiated. But it used to be we would put time in to negotiate. Now, it's all about the stats. We got units. Uh, let's just go in and shoot and get it over. Let's force the situation. Let's force a shooting because when we force a shooting, we know... We're not going to get sued. we got immunity, and we know the department's going to back us because government protects government. So it's going to be justified. Why do we want to waste time negotiating? Let's just go force a shooting and kill the guy, and we know it'll be justified, and we'll move on. Then we can go back to have a donut and coffee for the night. Hey. Hey. Neil. Uh, dude, I'm telling you, man. I will let you call your girl. Just come out with your hands above your head and empty. Neil, we're not going to come inside, man. I'm going to shoot. If you, if you... That's the first time he said we're not going to come inside. That's the first time. And who who right now, just from this conversation, what's important to this guy? He's got two things. He doesn't want anybody inside. He wants to talk to his girlfriend. Those are the two things that this guy is important. If it was up to me and this was a real negotiation, I would be contacting a girlfriend identifying her and telling her not to answer his phone call and getting intel from her and finding out, you know, history, what it is. Has he got a gun? Have they ever been to the range? How tactical? Does he have a bulletproof vest? Does he have friends? I mean, you know, I would be getting all kind of intel from the girlfriend and stopping her from talking to him because I don't want her talking to him. But whatever. I don't know how, again, I don't know how it's going to end up. Come inside, I'm going to shoot. Dude, we're not going to come inside, all right? This isn't I'm a big deal, my man. We just want you to come outside with your hands above your head. All right, let me call my girl. Let me do that much. Okay, dude. Dude, I'm going to shoot it. Do, do, you got, do you see my number? Yes, I do. But okay, don't man. Don't come inside right now. Don't come inside. I'm going to shoot. We're not going to call inside, man. We're not going to come inside. The fear and the paranoia, obviously, he's on the influence. He's on drugs. He, he's like, don't come inside, don't come inside. He's panicking. He knows they're going to come inside, but... Look, I mean, if he really wanted to shoot and he really wanted to die, he would go outside and start shooting. So he doesn't really want to do that, even though he's talking all this shit. Side man, okay? I'm gonna shoot through the window. I'm gonna shoot. I hey. got a 20 gauge. I got a 20 gauge right now. That's him in that front window. Hey. Okay, so now he's got the guy on the phone and he's yelling intel. Is this the way that you make this guy think you're his friend? Or... Do you make this guy think that, hey, man, he's telling the cops where I am. He just identified me. Man, he's working against me. This guy ain't my friend. He's trying to screw me. That's why you don't kind of do what this guy's doing. Rick, he doesn't know what he's trying, and you just, hey, cop, shut up. For hey, Neil, know. we know you got a shotgun, man, dad okay? Hostage. I got my dad hostage. Neil. What the fuck did you do? Neil. I'll shoot this motherfucker. I'll shoot my dad, too. I don't give a fuck. Hey, Neil. I'm going to let you call your girl, but I need you to come out so I can... I now, as a negotiator, and he said he's going to shoot his dad, I would have intervened and go, look, dude, I've already told you we're not going to come in. But if you shoot that gun, we're going to come in. And if you don't want us to come in, don't be firing any guns. We don't want any gunshots. 
Okay, you can't really help the guy, but you need to let him know that his worst fear is us coming in, and if you fire that gun, we're coming in. So if you really don't want us to come in, don't fire that freaking gun. I'll let you call her, okay? You calm down before I shoot all of you fucking officers down. Don't do none of that, okay? Okay. Stay back. Are you gonna Stay come back. out? Are you gonna come out for us? No. Why not, Wait, man? Wait, hold on. I'm gonna come back. If you can see, I can turn on the light. Don't come. Don't come to the. Don't approach the premises. Highly under the influence, doesn't know. Uh, when somebody's under the influence like that, you can't have a rational conversation. Sometimes negotiating with that is kind of fruitless. Normally, you just maybe, like this guy might be doing, is just stay on the phone, see if you can gather intel, not do anything to jack him up, get intel, keep him busy while your entry team is planning You know your distraction to either enter from two points or one point. Uh, they really don't have a reason to use deadly force yet. He's threatening, and he may have a gun. Could they shoot him and say they were protecting a father? I think it would be justified if they went ahead and stopped him. But but if they sniped him and killed him, I think community outrage would be, that's bullshit, he was drunk and you killed him and he really wasn't going to hurt, and you had no proof he was going to hurt his father. Well, you kind of do have proof because the daughter said he was going to hit him. Now, if they want to shoot him and snipe him to stop this because they really want to protect the guy inside, if they talk to the daughter and go, look, has your brother ever done this before? Do you think he's violent? Do you think your father's in danger? Do you think if we leave him alone that he's really going to shoot your father? And if she says, yes, he's threatened before, he stabbed my father before, he's very violent, then if you snipe him, you have more intel, totality of circumstances to say why we made the decision to shoot him. Without that intel, if you shoot him, you can't go later. Well, later we interview the daughter and she says she thought he would have shot him. Because after her brother's dead, she's not going to say that. She's going to say, no, he would have never done that. They killed him for no reason. We want big money and payout. So that's why it's important that you have multiple people. And as a negotiator, when I, I've got a table, I can write things down and give orders. I've got a runner right next to me, and I just write things down. I need this done. I hand it to him, and then he's out of the room. I don't yell it to him because then a suspect in here. So I'm writing things down, and I'm saying, Track down a girlfriend, block the girlfriend's number, get her number and get her on the phone. You know, do things like that I'm having other people do without yelling it to all the officers. So, anyway, I, I don't know where the hell I'm at, but let's go. Okay, we're not going to come in the I got my dad at gunpoint. I, got my dad at gunpoint. I hear you, I'll man. Kill all of you. Dude, we don't want anyone to, we don't want anyone to get hurt. We don't want anyone to get okay, killed. I'll kill my dad. I'll spit his head off right now. No. Don't come closer. We're not going to come closer, man. I promise you. Don't come closer because I'll, I'll kill all of you. Okay. I now, I guarantee you right now there's a sergeant that's pissed off that this guy's on the phone with him. And once you make contact, it's, I mean, it's a no win. If you stay on the line, they're going to say, you did this wrong. If you hang up, they're going to go, why did you hang up, man? We could have gotten more intel, etc. So there's really a no win. And that's why normally hostage negotiators, when I was you kind of report to the top guy. You don't you don't report to all the sergeants and all the lieutenants because they all got different ideas and they're all going to give you different and conflicting ways to run the negotiation. The negotiator, once I'm assigned as a negotiator and I've got contact, that's it. I, I don't I can't be reporting a whole bunch of people. A lot of times it used to be SWAT would coordinate with the negotiator on the entry and say, we need the guy. They get us a note and say Get him in this front room. We want to make entry. We have a sniper. We got a clear shot if you can get him to the bathroom, etc. So if there's something like that, then maybe I can talk the guy into going to the bathroom. Hey, man, the water's off. Or can you check for the medicine? Your sister needs medicine. Can you go check? I can get him in a room somehow to where the sniper can get a shot on him. Now, that's when I'm working with SWAT. Sometimes if the negotiation goes on and I start feeling as negotiator that, dude, I can talk this guy out. Don't freaking make entry. But everyone else says, we're going to make entry. This has gone on too long. Gore's freaking just, you know, a tree hugger, and he want, he doesn't want to shoot this guy. So we're not going to tell him we're making entry. And I will never even know that they're making an entry. We'll be in the middle of a phone call, and entry will be made. So sometimes it's handy to, to where the negotiator communicates with the tactical team. Sometimes it's not. Um, so anyway, where are we at here? Here we go. Shotgun in my hand right now. Okay, man. I'm gonna shoot myself. No. Hey, I have a bullet in the chamber. I'm gonna shoot myself. You mean do that? Neil, you're 18, my man. Okay. You got? Don't no. don't do that, man. Look, there's two men. I'm gonna shoot myself. Five, do that. 
Okay, 18-year-old liquid courage. First, he's going to shoot the cops. Then he's going to kill his dad. Now he's going to coot to himself. He's actually giving a lot of reasons that none, nobody has a reason to believe that he's really a danger and he's really going to do anything. Because all he's done is run his mouth and threaten a whole bunch. So it's the alcohol. So now, totality circumstances is growing more that they shouldn't shoot him because there's not a reasonable threat. Now, the cops will be able to say, well, in my experience, when somebody threatens to kill the cops, uh, he's, he's all got problems and is always capable of doing it. And if he threatens to kill his dad, that's a family member. That, in, that in proves that he has more propensity for uh, violence. And then he threatened to shoot himself. He has nothing to live for. We had to take him out because it was continually escalating and we couldn't wait for him to shoot somebody. You could justify it that way. My way is, look, dude's talking shit. He's on the influence. He hasn't shot anybody yet. He let his sister leave. We don't have any intel that he's really going to shoot. We don't even know if the gun's loaded. We don't even know if he even really has a gun. And so here he is, all these threatening. He sounds like, let's just talk to him a little bit and let the alcohol and drugs wear off, or he'll pass out from the drugs and alcohol, and we can go in and train nobody else to get shot or get hurt. But I don't know how it's going to work out, like I said. Neil, we don't, we don't want you to shoot you, man. Neil, we don't want we don't want to do that. Your little Neil, your little brother's out here, your sister's out here, and your dad's there. We don't want them to see that, man. While our officer was on the phone with Chiago Jr., other officers were able to make their way to the doorway to help the father out of the home. Wow. So that was a risky move. And I don't know how they did that, but when you got a guy saying, Don't come in, don't come in, I'll shoot, and now you come in. To me, that's almost negligent that if he would have shot, the cops would have caused this. Now, they would have said, well, we had to go in because we have to save life and property. And they don't save life and property when these cities are burning down. They get out of the city and they let the rioters do what they want. So that, 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 that old ploy that the cops are heroes and they're there to save people just doesn't fly with me anymore. I've seen it too many times over the last 40 years to where cops don't give a shit and government doesn't care. It's all a ploy. They use it when it's convenient. But I don't know how this ends up. As officers moved dad to a safe location, he told officers that his son did in fact have a shotgun and had been loading it. All right, so that changes. A few seconds ago, I said they don't know if he has a shotgun. Now they know he has a shotgun and they know it's loaded. But if the father's out, he's only a danger to himself. You can't shoot people because they threaten suicide. If I'm on a bridge and I say, I'm going to jump. And the cops show up and shoot me to save me. And then I fall off the bridge. And the cops go, hey, we were there to protect and serve, and we shot him to save him. We had to save him. That's what we do. I mean, that's just stupid. So if they've got the father out now, there's no reason to make entry. But we'll see if they do. I'm watching it, and I yeah. know this shotgun, I thought it was 28 shotgun, at least 100 yards. I know. 100 yards. So Neil. I'm going to reach one of you. Neil, I know, I know you're there, man. We don't want that to happen. Don't. Well, technically, your 20 gauge won't reach 100 yards if you got birdshot in it. It's just got BB, so it depends what kind of rounds you got. And I'll tell you the exact distance that your gun will shoot. <laughs> fucking approach. We're not They're approaching. Fucking out, because I'm gonna shoot and kill one of these fucking officers. I'm gonna okay. murder one of them. Okay, man. That's not what Don't we want. Approach. That's not what we want. Man, this department has a lot of missing hair. They must be a lot of wigs somewhere. Maybe they're donating their hair. Rick, they donated their hair. Okay, that's. I'm just pointing out they don't have a lot of hair. It's Do not approach. I'm gonna kill somebody. He doesn't want to do that. He says if he comes in front window, he's gonna start shooting. No, dude, we don't want to. See, are you planning to shoot me? He's increasing the paranoia of the suspect because he's talking and giving intel to other cops, and the suspect is hearing him. I mean, at least have a freaking mute button, dude. I saw your phone. It's an iPhone. Hit mute before you communicate with the other officer. You can still listen if your phone's on mute. This officer's trying. I know I shouldn't pick on him. I know he was. he's just trying to do good and I'm mean and I, whatever. Kill you, man. We just want you to come out with your hands up. Can you do that for me? No. Why not, man? Man, hold up. I ain't talking to somebody before. Hey, guys, he just hung up on me. As the situation was unfolding, officers observed a man live streaming the incident on social media. <laughs> Who the hell's live streaming? Who else is in the house to live stream? Maybe they're live streaming the cops outside 
and not inside. I'm like, dude, if they got a live stream, this dude's like a, a police resource. You need to freaking put him on the payroll if he can get in his house and live stream. <laughs> we cannot stress enough the dangers of the situation and encourage the man to get out of the line of fire. Okay, this is this is where the cops hate being filmed. They don't want somebody else filming them. So now they're going to make this, I guarantee you, about this guy filming and protecting him. Because I can tell by the way this guy said this. I may be wrong, but you watch. This guy is suddenly with a camera is going to get more attention to the guy in the house with a gun that's drunk. You're not responsible for my safety. <laughs> that's the guy filming and he's absolutely correct per the Supreme Court they do not have a duty to act they do not have a duty to protect you don't have to protect me I'm a freaking thinking free human being if I want to be here in danger I can it's not about protecting him it's about they don't want to be filmed and get caught on tape doing shit the Mesa Police Department is committing to protecting our entire community in this case our officers wanted to ensure the safety of everyone in that apartment. Oh my God, now he's gonna make it about they gotta protect the poor video guy. Nearby apartments, on the street, as well as all officers at the scene. The man continued live streaming and detailing what was happening. The, the guy said, don't fucking come over here. He says, he says I'll fuck you up. He's got a shotgun pointed right towards him. Look, there's some, and somebody might want to put a, a, a site of a case or a, a think on this, but there's case law out there that says anybody that reports is a journalist. And this guy is reporting, and if he's under journalist protection, freedom of the press, these cops have no reason to stop people from filming them. To me, only the guilty don't want to be filmed. Okay, only the guilty does not want to be videotaped, which is why politicians don't wear body cams, by the way. But th this is just, they have no reason to harass this guy if they end up harassing. I don't know. Let's see, we got about five minutes left in the video. I said you're not responsible for my safety now. Now you're hindering. He's across the street. He's no, he's got to be at least... I don't know, shit, 25, 30 yards away. And somehow they found a crime that they can arrest him for. Hindering. Really? If you don't want people there, put up freaking crime tape. If you want to tape the area off, put up crime tape. They don't want to put up crime tape because then the guy could stand on the outside of the crime tape and they couldn't do anything. So by not putting up crime tape, we allow, we can say, oh, he's too close. What? How's he supposed to know? He's just a stupid, pesky citizen. Unless the trained government monkeys put up tape to let the stupid, pesky citizen know where he can be, how is he supposed to know? There, I'm behind your police car. Now kiss my ass. Okay, so as a as the guy videotaping, uh, antagonizing and arguing with him, look, if the cops want to yell and waste time on you, let them waste time. But don't, 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 if you engage in them, they're going to be able to say his constant berating and yelling and hollering at us was distracting us and we didn't know if he was a threat and he could have been armed and therefore for officer safety, we had to go pat him down and search him. And then when we tried to pat him down, he resisted. So we had to arrest him for resisting arrest. And we showed him that if you videotape us, you're going to go to jail. That's how this story ends up. Well, I don't know if this one ends up, but that's how most of them end up. Right there. The guy is right there in that window with the blinds open. See, as a cop, I'm like, I don't care if you videotape. That's good. That's more evidence. That proves what we did. That is great for if somebody to do a report or if we go to trial later. It's great documented recorded video evidence. Hell, I wouldn't care if 40 people showed up and videotaped every damn scene. Now I got plenty of witnesses and nobody can accuse me of shit. And I know I'm doing good and I can even evaluate it later and say I shouldn't have done that. And I, should, and I could take it as a learning tool.
Why are cops so against people filming them? Because the guilty hate to be filmed. He's got his head in the window. And he's telling them if, he, if they come in, he'll shoot them. After numerous attempts, an officer was able to get Chiago Jr. back on the phone and continued to try and calm him down and end the standoff. Well, this says it's an officer involved shooting. If he was able to calm down and end the standoff, why is this an officer involved shooting? This is going to be interesting. Go. Hey, Neil. What's going on, man? What's going on? Of course. <laughs> Dude, we know what's going on. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'll stop cracking on his negotiating skills. Fucking nigga, you suck my dick, bitch. Something's going on, son. Hey, man, what's, what's, what's going on in that room? You're gonna kill me? You're gonna kill me? Uh, does the guy not know that the cops got his father out? Or does the negotiator not know? Or is he not... Do we, does anybody know whether the father's out yet or not? This briefing from the Mesa Police Department is as confusing as a scene. Neil, Neil, we don't want to kill you, man. We don't kill him? No, dude, that's not what we want. See, you, you, why are you mentioning kill? As a negotiator, you never want to bring up hostages dying or killing or things like that. Those are the words you want to stay away from. This guy goes, we don't want to kill you. And the guy goes, what? You're going to kill me? Oh, shit. Great job, negotiator. <laughs> did you text Neil? Did you text your girl? Yes, sir. I need to call on the phone, sir. I got a shot. Look up. Look up right now. Look at me. So the guy said, "Sorry, I got excited." This guy is what I call a a person I could negotiate with because he's not as crazy as he sounds like when he starts talking I'm gonna shoot you nigga this I'm coming here in my house I'm gonna blow you away when he's talking that crazy she sounds pretty crazy but here he sounds like there's a little bit of reason somewhere that you can negotiate if you don't talk about killing and people dying and things that excite him and coming in and things like that Neil we see you man Neil don't do it bro all right man just put put the shotgun down you hear the officers talking in the background? The suspect probably hears that too. Another reason you don't negotiate right in the middle of a tactical situation that close. I get it. They're trying to do the best they can, but from a tactical standpoint and from a negotiation standpoint, this isn't ideal. Neil, don't do it, man. Don't do it. I got it now, sir. Neil. He just called him sir. So it went from suck my dick to sir. So the guy's calming down. He's kind of burning himself out. Sometimes, a lot of times, you can let a guy burn himself out, get all excited, let him run his mouth, do all that shit. And then once he's said it enough and it's got it out of his system, he starts calming down. Like it sounds like this guy is calming down. Put the shotgun down, man. We don't want this. We don't want to shoot you, Neil. We want you to come out with your hands up. An officer who was positioned behind the driver's door of his vehicle, in direct sight of the window, saw the suspect point the barrel of a shotgun toward officer. Oh my God, this is how it's shooting. They, got, they found a way to kill him. Well, the gun was pointed officer, therefore an officer was in danger, therefore I was justified to shoot. Wow. Fearing he and his fellow officers were about to get shot, the officer fired his rifle. A sergeant positioned next to him saw the same threat and fired his duty weapon almost simultaneously. <laughs> the man who was continuing his live stream also captured the suspect point the shotgun toward officers. Oh yes. Yeah, he does have a shotgun in the air. Oh, so now they want to now they want to make the guy live streaming a good guy, right? That's why I said I don't mind if guys videotape because it ends up helping you. God damn, they just shot him. They just shot him. They got an ambulance coming. He put the shotgun in the air. And nah, this is a bullshit shooting. They had the hostage out. He's in there talking shit. He was calming down. 
it sounds like negotiating was going better. He was calling him sir. He was saying he was sorry. And now they shoot the guy. This is bullshit in my book. But let's see how they spin it. And they shot him. Officers were unsure of Chiago Jr.'s condition and continued to ask him to come out over the loudspeaker. After a few minutes and no response, officers began to approach the apartment. Medical personnel were called to the scene and the suspect was taken to a nearby hospital where he later passed away. Wow, they killed him. Well, I didn't know what was going to happen. You guys saw it in my thought process and things that I saw as I saw it real time. So, uh, they had another, another justified shooting from the police protecting and serving the shit out of people because the neighbor called on a domestic violence. Look, this guy was being an idiot. He was a drunk. He had a gun. This will be justified. Unfortunately, I don't think it was necessary. And I think it was bullshit. But the cops will be heroes. They'll be high-fiving. I saw the threat. Yeah, man, we saved some cops' lives, man. We protected the brother Blue. We ended this thing. Come out here threatening us to shoot us. We'll show you. We shot you. What do you think about that? We're tough. We're the boys in blue, the thin blue line, serving and protecting the shit out of you. All right, we'll end that there.